so I'm Amanda. Um, I've been a licensed massage therapist for almost 10 years now. And this is the amazing Monica. <laughs> so she is um, so nice to volunteer. She's basically going to let me do some massage techniques for her. Um, and uh, I am an expert with massage therapy. I'm not an expert with autism, but I've been learning, researching, asking questions. Monica has taught me, taught me so much already, yeah. and I'm hoping we can kind of combine our forces and teach some other people yeah. what they can do, and yeah. maybe help some people out, right? Yeah. Okay, awesome. So my thing with anyone is during the consultation process, it is very important to communicate well. So Monica, I want you to t tell me all your likes and dislikes, and um, I can I can talk you through those as well. I don't like boy yellow brothers. <laughs> so that's a pizza place. Yes. And I don't. I've never tried them, but I don't think I will. After your word, for, I'll take your word for it. Okay. <laughs> so with massage, what do you like and dislike? Do you like your head work, your scalp work done? No. No. So we're not going to do scalp today. Um, what about the neck and the shoulders? Yes. Okay. What about the arms? Is this okay? Yes. Great. And then um, you mentioned earlier about having some belly issues. Or is your belly going to be an issue with massage? No. Great. So we can maybe help that um, help that out for you. And then what about the legs? Is that going to be a bothersome for the massage? No. Awesome. So Monica is great for me to work on for my first client because her father Gary um, does a lot of work with her and they've made a lot of benefits in terms of touch and trusting touch and she's a great example as to how much it can actually help because massage truly connects the mind and the body and um, creates a trust, a bond for the, the mother, the father, the caregiver, uh, for the child or the person with autism. So she's already just rocking. She's doing great. My stomach's growling. It is. Cause you want pizza. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's so boy. Uh huh. So the table heater is on, and I we've talked to Monica, and she feels is it so comfortable? It's on like a medium setting for the heat. Yeah. Still good? Okay, great. Um, and then, basically, you want to make them as comfortable as possible. So I understand that not everybody has a massage table. I, um, I just so happen to have one, so that's what we're using. Um, I brought my yoga mat. You can bring, you can, you know, work on them with the yoga mat, on a towel, on your couch, on your bed, whatever's comfortable. Um, so we're going to use our table, and Monica, you can go ahead and put your head in this, she calls this a sea pillow, which I think is brilliant. I'm using that forever now. Can you play this song? Yeah, so we're going to play her song. She likes to listen to Frozen, um, slow. Is this one, I think this one is forwards, not the backwards one. No. So. I like the horror. The horror, you want a horror Frozen, right? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of want one too. Alright, cool. So... So is the lighting, is the temperatures, the music, everything okay? Everything yes. Feels good? Yes. Excellent. All right, so we're going to start the session with kind of a hold, um, an energy hold, getting her used to my hands, my pressure. And um, prior to this session, I kind of worked with her as far as pressure, just to see what she likes. Um, and what she doesn't like. Of course, I'm going to continue to check in, and I would do that every day because some days she might like a little lighter touch, some days she might like a little deeper touch, so it's kind of whatever Monica wants, right? Because she's the boss. Yeah. <laughs> You're in charge. All right, so there's a couple different strokes that we can use, um, one of which is to potent, and um, that's a very rhythmic type of stroke. And you can do it with your hands. If you're using your hands, it's in a cupping motion. And in this sense, the palm of your hand never actually touches her back. So it's a very rhythmic. And check in, is this pressure okay? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, a little tip about cupping. If you're sick, this can kind of help break up the mucus in the lungs. So it's great if you have a cold. You can help with that. And you can kind of do this all over the body. You can also use a chopping motion as well. And we're still doing potent here. This helps relax the muscles, also helps increase blood flow, and it can help stimuli uh, the nervous system. 
So when you're doing Tapotman, we want to avoid doing any work on the spinal area. And I would just say, um, if you're giving your daughter, your son, um, or someone that you work with massage, just to kind of focus, um, stay in the moment. Um, you're doing this for them, you're also doing this for yourself. Because in the long run, or in the short run actually, this is going to help build a bond between you and um, the individual that you're working with. So I typically do a lot of sports massage, a lot of deep tissue. I actually don't do much Swedish massage, but when I do, um, I love it because I actually feel relaxed too. Um, I think that you know if you're focused and if you're in tune enough, even the practitioner can receive the um, same benefits or similar benefits. So Monica expressed to me, what's that? Okay, so she expressed to me that her shoulders are kind of tight. I'm going to grab her arm. And she has some hyper flexible elbows here. <laughs> Very flexible, right? Right. So I'm going to move and put your arms into placement, and if it's uncomfortable, just let me know, okay? How's that? Good. Good. So, why are your shoulders so tight, Monica? Because they are. They are? Yeah. I think you and your dad, you guys do a lot of active stuff together, right? So I am kind of doing some, um, a little bit of light work, circular motion, some friction, um, and this can help break up some lactic acid buildup. So we've done like a test pressure, so I'm pretty sure this pressure is uh, comfortable, but since this is our, we're new to working with each other, how am I doing so far? Good. Could okay. you play the song again? Yeah. Thank she knows when it ends. You are very observant. So with the research that I've done, I've uh, learned that there are different spectrums of autism. And with often touch, even if it's, you know, 10, 15 minutes a day or most days, especially, you know, if it's, it's beneficial, if it's at a similar time, everyone loves well, creatures with habits, getting into that routine is amazing. Um, but frequent mini massages can get them into a better spectrum for autism or lower up the spectrum and this has been the case with Monica as well. She's greatly improved since her dad has been so active. Um, massage can also help them decrease with anxiety, blood pressure, stress, heart rate. If they can sleep better during the night then their next day is going to be better. Don't you think? Do you think you do yeah. better the next day when you sleep? Can you sleep good? Yeah. I do too. <laughs> so getting a good healthy sleep is important. Um, now since Monica has been receiving massage for a good period of time, she's great with this touch. At first, it will probably take them a little while to be acclimated. Um, if that's the case, you can use different sensory tools, and we brought some today. Um, they can kind of play with those while you're working on them to occupy that part of their brain that might feel a little anxious or uneasy. Um, there are also massage balls that you can use. I brought this from my home and um, you can kind of rock it over her body. How's this girl? Good. Awesome. So I'm just kind of doing some circular motion and I'm not applying a lot of pressure. I love using this tool. Unfortunately, I have a dog who believes that this toy is his toy, so I have to keep it away from him. Even though he has plenty of balls on his own. <laughs> so during the session, if I'm working with someone, my focus is to stay with my client. Um, if I start thinking about, you know, any kind of stressors or anything in life aside from what's happening right now, 
I try to stop myself and refocus. Um, try to get in a good energy for your clients. If you're in a bad mood or if you're stressed, you might pass that on to them. So this is, you know, 10, 15 minutes out of your day just to have some nice positivity for both of you, creating a bond physically and mentally as well. So using tools like this can help. All right, are you ready to flip over? Yeah. Cool. So you can go ahead and scoot down a little bit too. Perfect. So Monica does not like her scalp, so we're not going to do any scalp today. Um, I do have some lotion too, which we will use. This is the paraben-free coconut oil lotion. Doesn't have a strong scent to it. You have like the smoothest skin. <laughs> she doesn't even need lotion. Yet. <laughs> okay, how's the pressure here? Awesome. So I think full body is is great because it helps um, kind of connect everything. It completes completes the session. So I know I'm doing a couple of different pulling strokes. Um, with massage, you want most of the strokes to be towards the heart. And I like to think that every stroke has a purpose. So if I were to stop myself during any part of the session and say, what is the purpose of this stroke? Um, I would have an answer for myself. And that also goes hand in hand with kind of staying focused and staying in the moment. Do you do a lot of games and stuff with your hands? Yeah. Yeah? What do you like to do the most? Different art projects? Yeah. Yeah? Awesome. What kind? Uh, oh, no. No. Oh, oh, no. Okay. Oh, uh, from Frozen? Oh, on a doll. Okay. I've seen that many times. It's good. Oh, you want me to play the song again? Yeah. Okay. Finish the arm, promoting that blood flow back to the heart. You can do compression as well. And if you find that they're um, stiffing up, which she's awesome and limber and nice and relaxed, but if they are stiff, you can just kind of remind them, shake their arm and say, just go ahead and relax this arm. And that might, it might help them, it might not, it might take them time. Um, to kind of figure out that this is relaxation time. This is the time where they can just um, let their body in the hands of someone else. What do you think you like to think about when you're getting a massage, Monica? Um, good. You good? Feels good? Mm -hmm. Good. This arm a little bit. Perfect. That was good. That was great too. <laughs> Do you think you're gonna sleep good tonight? Yeah. Good. So I like to get each kind of individual fingers. Um, you can shake them as well a little bit. This is called coin rubbing. Do you have an upset stomach right now? Yeah. Can you do? Okay. 
So I'm just going to kind of do some clockwise strokes. Should I pull her shirt up a little bit? Sure. Okay. Is that okay for you? Yeah. Okay. So, clockwise is always great because you're moving with the flow of the digestive tract. You don't want to like back up anything. Going up right along the rib cage, across the stomach, back down to right above the hip, across to the other hip, and back up to right, right around the rib cage. And I'm using two hands and nice fluid movement. movement. As I'm working with her, I'm staying centered. I'm trying to um, be nice and relaxed and have that good positive energy. And you can see she's kind of becoming more and more relaxed too. And when you get the stomach too, it's great because it helps complete the entire session. So their entire body is feeling connected. And then when you're communicating with them in terms of what you're doing or how they feel, they're connecting their body with it as well. Um, having the mind and the body connected is truly important, especially when well, we're all learning about ourselves continuously through life. This massage is making me realize too. <laughs> okay. So I'll pull this above here. And then I'll restart your song. We can do some deportment with this. Um, I might feel uncomfortable with the deportment being done on the knees. And then we can do some compression strokes. Nice strong legs, huh? Yep. <laughs> you don't have to use massage or lotion with massage, but I find it it helps. Did you want to play with that uh, lavender play-doh that yeah. we had? Okay, cool. So this is neat. This is some play-doh with some uh, lavender essential oils, and she really loves it. <laughs> While we're working on our legs, she can play with that sensory toy. All right, again, so with this, we want to do nice, fluid, relaxing strokes towards the heart. Um, we can incorporate different types of medium strokes in there as well. Now Monica and her dad are 
are very active. He does a lot of activities with her, um, and she, as he explained to me, likes to wear boots, which can make her quads a little tight, her ankles a little stiff. But for her wearing boots, why do you like to wear boots? Because like Brittany. Oh, like Brittany? Yeah. Brittany. Don't put your back. Oh. So I'm kind of working from the um, top of the foot all the way to where this muscle inserts into the knee here. I'm writing some great circulation for her legs. And then at the top we can kind of continue with the kneading. Ready for the feet? Yeah. So we're going to do some feet, and feet can kind of be similar to the hands. Do that little coin rub for each individual toe. You can shake them out as well. And then again, I like to get like in between the tendons here. Nice fluid strokes. So around the heels, especially if she's wearing boots a lot, it's good to get right this band right here it goes from this bone to this bone and if you can kind of do some circular motion you can help with uh, range of motion with the ankle does that feel okay yeah okay if she's wearing heavier shoes there could be a lot of strain here so breaking up some tissue providing blood flow to this area can help with any tension that might be there. And then just kind of moving to the flow of their ideal pressure. Um, I've got my hands firmly around her feet and I'm just to secure them. I'm just doing some circular motion. So this is a good one to kind of put your fingers here and spread the feet out. And get the toes to move. Um, also, using the blanket for friction purposes, wrap one hand around one side of the foot, another around the other side of the foot, and just kind of move in opposite directions. Stretched out. That's a nice stretch for the foot. Okay. So we're on to the next place? Yeah. Okay. And over here, we're going to do a very similar protocol for this leg. Providing blood flow through the leg, moving upwards towards the heart. I like to connect my strokes, a lot of my strokes are starting from one end of the muscle to the to the other. And if you don't know the muscles, that's totally fine. Starting at the ankle here and going to the knee. It helps just complete the stroke. And honestly, it just feels better. So after this session, I would recommend them to, you know, as possible, as much as possible, stay relaxed. Um, that's why I think this is great to do before bedtime. Any physical activity, if the muscles are are relaxed, is going to. Um, it's not necessarily bad, but it's going to stress the muscles out a little more. So they're not going to get the full effect of the massage. They're not going to stay as relaxed as long. What time do you usually go to bed, Monica? Seven. Oh, okay. So this is a good time to get your massage. What time is it now? Five, ten. Yeah. 
Yeah, a couple more hours. And 7.10 in New York. Yes. <laughs> She's great. So it's 7.10 in New York on the East Coast where I'm from. Yeah. And then it's 5.10 here. So you've got a couple hours to relax, maybe eat some pizza. Yeah. And then now we can eat pizza. A couple minutes. You should just buy your pizza, right? Yeah. <laughs> so again, just kind of working each toe. Um, and the great thing about massage is you can continue to learn about their bodies and adjust your session each time. So you want to stay pretty consistent, but at the same time, every, you know, if they like something, you can stay consistent with that. But then add in things that they might like as well. So you're learning about their bodies the more that you work with them, and then they're learning about their bodies too. Um, continue to check in, continue to stay verbal with them. And then after the session, talk to them about what they liked, if there was anything they didn't like, and then you can write your notes. Um, notes can be what they told you they wanted, if they do tell you anything about the session, um, what you felt during the session, what areas were tight, um, if the potent worked, if the flowing motion of effleurage was, effleurage was good, and the petrissage where you did that. Um, so the next time you go back to your session, you can kind of refer to that. So we're just going to end the session by completing the body. All right. So what if we took a nice deep breath in together? <sighs> You want to do one more? And thank you so much, Monica. You're I had welcome. fun. <laughs> thank you.